Hi friends, how are you today? Welcome to Joyfido International. Um, this is where we talk about things that that help our life, things that make us better people, um, things that inspire us. So today is just one of those days. My name is Joy Fido and I'm going to be chatting with you about this. So why am I here today? Uh, it's just one of those days, one of those really explosive topics. Uh, the topic touches me deeply and so I have this series I call From the Heart, Deep From the Heart. That's what this topic is going to be today. It's deeply from my heart. And the title is Marriage. Is it a cause or is it a blessing? So that's the title. Marriage. A cause or a blessing? Now, why is that a question? Why is that a question? It's a question because I've been married for 25 years. I have lots of friends who've been married and are married. And now I'm beginning to have, I have children who are growing to that age of having relationship and affairs or whatever you want to call it. And the question's coming to me now, what is it like to be married? I have nephews and nieces. So, it's quite an interesting topic that really touches my heart and that's why I've decided to come today to talk about it. Why? Because I will not be picking one person at a time and say this is what marriage is and the other person this is what marriage is. And so, I decided to put in a video and once it's done, then when people ask me, go and watch the video and let's see what you think of it. So is it a blessing or a curse? I've written quite a few things that are quite interesting. Marriage at its best is exciting. It's really exciting. <coughs> it will make you glow. And as I'm talking about marriage today, I'm not just saying as a woman alone. Men go through marriage, women go through marriage. And so at its best, you will be on top of the world. You will glow. You will feel like you are invincible. You feel like nothing can touch you. You feel like you can achieve anything under the sun. That's how exciting it can be. Because now you're with somebody else that makes you feel together we can do a lot. Together we are one amazing team that no one can touch. And so this is when it is at its best. And trust me, I know so many people who are in that group, who have it really good, going well. That doesn't mean there's never any time when it goes wrong. Of course it does go wrong, even in this group of the good ones. But it's not, it's not that often. We may not know because those of us on the outside don't know what goes on behind closed doors. But I know that at its best, it is exciting. Now let's look at it from the other side, at its worst. At its worst it will make you feel so small. At its worst it will make you feel insignificant. It will make you feel hopeless. It will make you feel useless. It gives people high blood pressure, marriage. It gives people heart attack. It leads to depression. People die from marriage. It leads to low self-esteem. And worst case scenario, people get murdered in marriage by their partners. It happens. I would know about marriage and its problems because I've been married for 25 years, like I said. I know the experiences my mom had in my little time with her. Because my mom died when I was quite young. And I would know my sister when my big sister went through the same scenario. In the process of marriage, she died. Generally, 
Apparently, people don't want to talk about marriage. Why? Because most people think it's a taboo. Because most people think it only means happening to. Most people think mine is the worst case scenario. And so if I dare tell anybody what I'm going through, they're going to tell me, oh, shut up. You're imagining it. That's not the case. It needs to be spoken about. People need to understand that there are some things that we could bring out in the open that could save a lot of people, a lot of heartache, a lot of pain, a lot of stress. And so that's why I've decided to just talk about it today to prepare the people that have been asking me questions to start understanding what they're dealing with from both sides of the scenario which is what I've just said on a good day you could be so excited and on a bad day you could be struggling I made quite a bit of notes so I'm trying to just try and pick out where my notes are <clears throat> what brings two people together usually is love usually now that doesn't necessarily mean that all the time when people get to marriage it is love that brought them together there are, there are cases where you hear of arranged marriage where there is no love involved and these people just have to be together but generally from the western society point of view is love love brings you two together now question is what will keep you two together is not always love and so it's really important that you get this message because you're going to start wondering but 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 she told me she loved me but he told me he loved me why why are things so different from what we started with so that's what you need to know what will bring you together will be that attraction that love oh i love her and she loves me i love him and he loves me yes but what will keep you together for this longevity this 20 years this 25 years this 50 years like the the queen and her husband is not love you'll be deeper than love and so when i'm going to start getting into it we'll look at three major things but i think i'll come to that i i'll I'll take us slightly back again from what I've written where the question was marriage is it a cause or is it a blessing now it depends on who is asking it depends on who is answering as well and I'll just say who is answering in this case now to people that is doing amazingly well for it is a blessing you meet this person, you connect really well, you are a team, things happen. Because, you know, I've done a video before where I talked about one plus one is three. So you bring something on board, I bring something on board, and we make this amazing too. And so that's a blessing, because we now brought an extra thing on board. But, it's not always the case it's not always this amazing blessing where one plus one is three it goes really wrong sometimes that's when it becomes a cause you could be asking my mom or oh, bless her memory i never got to really know my mom because she died at a very when i was a very young person a marriage for her was a, a cause because in the end, it was what took her life. You could be asking my big sister, which I said earlier, in the end, it led to her losing her mind and her life ended with it. You could be asking lots of my friends, people might say, oh yeah, you attract the wrong people because you, you only get to know people who are struggling in marriage. Well, I don't attract them. Things just happen. People tell me things. And I know so many people who are struggling. Depression has set in. People have lost their minds in marriage. And so to them, it's a huge cause. Maybe you 
you want to ask me about me? What, what about you? <laughs> I can tell you it's neither a blessing nor a curse. Because I'm neither way. I'm not going to stand here and tell you it's been what an amazing walk in the park. We're standing by the beach and having so much fun. Oh, oh my gosh, it's been the most horrible thing ever. It's come down to understanding. It can really sap all your energy. If you've been following me on my YouTube channel, I know I'm, I'm doing a live broadcast of this as well. But I've been reading this book called Purpose Driven Life to my YouTube audience. It's one of the reasons I had to start reading that book, Marriage. Because I realized that I'd lost my core. I lost who I was. I, I suddenly realized that all I was doing was putting all my energy into my marriage, trying to understand what marriage meant. And then I started asking myself, but what is my purpose in life? Is it just to stick a marriage together or what? Then I remember that I had a book, Purpose Driven Life. And I remember some of the some of the passages or the chapters say something about it it is a deliberate thing that we have to be with people that we struggle to understand sometimes or to live with. It's a test. So we're meant to see how we can handle people that don't really connect with us. And so I became stronger. So that's why it's neither here nor there for me, the marriage. And this is why this video is so important because if you haven't got that strength of character, that strength of mentality, to handle other people around you, no matter how much you, you say to yourself that you love them, you actually see yourself going mentally, you'll be lost. And when people have depression and become insane, it doesn't take too much. I mean, some of the things I understand is it could just take a tiny little bit of thing to break a person. And so it requires a lot of inner strength to hold you together, to understand the people you're dealing with in the name of marriage. Now, I, I, I remember circulating an article on, on Facebook. I think I'll come to that at some point. And one of the questions somebody asked was, if it is this difficult, why are people still getting married? That's a unique question. Now, interesting thing is, it's a continuous process. And so, today, I am older, and I have younger children who are pro progressing in life, and so it's just nature, it's just societal expectations that the next big thing is you get married, and you have children, and you carry on with your life. And so, it is not for anybody to sit out there and say, why are people still getting married? But I think the most important thing we should understand is how do you handle marriage? How do you cope with it? How do you cope with difficult scenarios? How do you work through it with your sanity intact without you mentally derailed or you know all the things we talked about, getting lost, depression, high blood pressure. And People commit suicide. I, I heard a story the other time not too long ago of this lady who had to take her 12 year old son and they go into a car and commit a suicide. So you get all kinds of things that come with marriage and it was down to what the husband had done to her. So three things we are going to be looking at while discussing marriage issues. And three of them, one will be sex. 
one of the most important things that attract two people together that sense of endearment that sense of connection that sense of um lots of people get it so wrong they think marriage is about sex and so that's a major part of it discussed uh second one would be managing the home managing the home the household in marriage how does that work out and then the third one would be um financial understanding or financial management um how do we manage finances in marriage such that it helps to hold us together those are the three major things i'm going to explore details or rather I talk a bit more about and so let's start with sex um there's that song you remember i don't know if you remember that song let's talk about sex baby let's talk about you and me all the good things and the bad things so what is it about sex now I remember when i said um love will bring you two together but will it hold you together so generally in the western world that's the first thing we look at what attracts us together and so is that attraction of sex so what is sex now i watched a video the other day dr miles monroe and he's one of the people that's really looked at sex in a very interesting way regarding marriage he was looking at it from the point of view of the man something he said was quite interesting he said men need sex they don't want sex now when we go into biology secondary school we all did biology you hear the amount of sperms that the man holds and each time he has his ejaculation how much sperms come out then you wonder and so what Dr. Monroe was talking about is for men it's not about if they want to have sex it's a necessity and when we're looking at necessity we're looking at food food is a necessity we're looking at water what is a necessity without it your body will break down we're looking at home shelter where do I stay it's a necessity and so when we finish with need then we go to want and want slowly starts to become luxury i want to have so let's say you want to have water basic water is there but no i want that other special water or there's food here whatever it is you say no no no, i want that special food and so it starts to change from necessity to want but in this case it's not about want it's about need and so the scenario here is for men, sex is a necessity and so they must have it. But this innocent young woman is now being attracted to this man because he said to her, you're the only one I see. Nobody else around me matters, it's just you and me. Let's do this thing together. And so innocent young girls with that understanding that he's not going to look at no other woman but me and so you give it and this is why you should know that marriage is not sex because two days later after he's finished with you he's going to see another woman down the road being that for a, for a man sex is a need his need now arises that he must have sex he will go to bed with that woman too let no man out there stand and say to me, oh, there she is presenting us as sex maniacs. According to Dr. Monroe, sex is a need. And so the sooner men stop pretending to women that, oh, you're the only woman I will sleep with, the better for every woman involved. I'm in college right now, and this is interesting. One of my classmates, I don't want to mention religion here now before I get into trouble by anyone. But he says his culture is that they're expected to have four wives. Four wives. So I said to him, so what, what 
what is the need for this? Why do you, what, what do you have to offer this woman? Why do you have to have four wives? And he said, that's just the way the culture is. And so in the end, his dad had eight wives because they, they could divorce one and then get another and divorce one and get another. And so if you're the woman, you're involved in this relationship and you're thinking, oh yeah, it's just me. No, get the message, it's not just you. Because for a man, he needs sex. And so as many women that he can have sex with, the better. And so the sooner the woman understands that this relationship is not tied to sex, the happier everyone will be. The sooner you're not going to have headache. You're not going to have high blood pressure. You're not going to have heart attack just because you saw your husband sleeping or you heard that he has an affair or whatever it is. And so that's sex. So if you're going into marriage, believing, having the illusion that your husband's going to be faithful to just you. Get the message. Men need sex. That's it. Let them also stop pretending and telling women it's just you. And this is one of the reasons my mom died. Because my dad was everywhere. I love my dad to bits. I'm proud of him. I just love him as a person. But when it came to relationship with women, you could not even see his backside because he was there. Every place you can think of. I know there's so many half sisters and brothers all over the place that I don't remember, I've never met. Because for a man, he has to sow his seeds according to some movies you watch. Interestingly, I saw another article the other day on Facebook. And this woman, in her early 40s. Her job, the website is called illicitaffairs.com. So as usual, you men who love sex and you just can't do without it, there's a website like that. And their job is to just offer men sex. And this woman said, she's so proud of herself, she said her job is to hold marriages together. Because the wives are so stressed at home from the regular home life that they're not allowing their husband to have sex with them, so they have to find a way to release themselves. And that's when she comes in. So her role now is to make sure that he finishes with her and goes home to the wife. And then she gets in return expensive gifts. They take her all, over the, all, over, all around the world and life is good. She's happy, the man is happy. Supposedly the woman at home is happy too. Because now the husband has somewhere to go and release himself and come back home, a happy man. So it comes down to the man's typical selfishness. I don't want to know about how much of a need a man has of sex. And some of you are aware of this. Amsterdam is a place for it. They have prostitutes or brothels all over the place. Their job is provide sex for men. Who want to just come and pay for sex and have it. But then the man sits at home and lies to his wife and pretends this ignorant, quiet me who do not have no I've never touched anybody else but you. Why do we live in such a world of pretenses and lying to ourselves? Why? The sooner every woman is aware of the reality of the life we live in, the better. Because if roles were reversed and women can go out there and have as many, as many men as they want to, then, then there will be peace at home, won't there? Because that will now lead us to the next stage, which, which is the life at home. And this is where I saw the video, or rather um, this article I was talking about, where it was said, Husbands are frustrating women more than the children. They actually are giving women more grief at home than the children. And I remember, let me, let me give you the website. It was quite an interesting one too. And they said the women have been turned into, uh, what's the website called again? Or oh, healthy living or something like that. remember the website right now 
healthy holistic living healthy holistic living.com and it was about husbands are stressing women more than children that's what the title was and this is when you remember i said somebody then said if it's that bad why are people still getting married he said women have been turned into into teachers into chef into maid into nurse into special advisor special event coordinator care for the children care for the husband cleaner you you name it that's what a woman is at home and get involved with the children education want to know what the children are up to or constantly advising the children don't do it this way do it that way to the point that this is the one that really gets me to the point that the woman has to become the role model to a son the husband does not want to know what their children their sons are doing because this makes me think i recall i don't remember my dad sitting down with my brothers and advising them on life I don't remember knowing, seeing that. And it's carrying out till today. Men don't sit with their sons to say, this is how you treat a woman, this is how life goes, this is how... No, no such thing. The woman also has to take on that role. But when the son grows up and becomes an adult, then he remembers what his dad was like and then repeats that role to the next woman he meets. And this is when you hear spirituality says to you, familiar spirits. Because this has been running in the family and it will continue to run. So do you now see why women just struggle? I know when we started we said curse or, or, or blessing. I know my brothers went through equally horrible marriages. Maybe for me, it's just a thing from my family. We just understand that, you know, well, go out there, care for your partner. And so whichever way we tilt, we struggle. If you're a woman in marriage, you struggle. And if you're a man in marriage, you struggle. Maybe that's just our thing, familiar spirit. But that's the scenario you see most of the time. People getting really confused in marriage, not knowing what to expect from it, not knowing what they're actually having to deal with. So the question then becomes, why? Why do you get married? We'll get to that. But the next topic you remember I said sex then household managing the household or managing the home and then the third one was financial management so financial management financial management becomes how do we eat how do we clothe how do we find a decent home to live in what kind of car do we drive as a family how do we go on holidays as a family what kind of career do we both take on so that we are available for the children when children are involved Not everybody is that lucky to have a husband or a wife that understands finances. Finances is what keeps a family running. Because the minute you lose understanding of finances, you destroy your home. That's how simple it is. And you have scenarios where the woman is the one who's gone crazy. She just wants to buy everything. She sees whatever little money available in the house. She wants to grab it and, and buy herself this and buy herself that and, and not care if there's enough for the children to eat at home. When there's a party, we have to dress the part. The children may look as scruffy as ever, not a problem because it's about her first. So selfishness comes in. 
And then you have the other scenario as well, where the man becomes the pain, has no clue about what managing finances is in the home. Where for him, it's about, oh, is there money now? Let me just go and shop with it. Let me, let me spend it all on the credit card. Let me walk into the shop and whoever says what, I have the money. And then this is not when it's just about him shopping and, and going crazy with money. Plus his train of girlfriends. Because obviously he has the need for sex. So whatever that woman wants, he has to give her so that she'll be available to give him his need of sex. And so what the family is going through at home does not matter. Then is it a wonder why the poor woman at home is stressed out? Because she's trying to make ends meet. She's worrying about the next bill, the electricity bill, the water bill, the, the, the children's school fees, the children's school dinner, the school, you know, and, and the list just carries on. And then before you know it, you're stressed to high heavens and you're already having high blood pressure and you're having heart attack and your face is looking drawn and you don't look yourself anymore because of a man who just refuses to understand that there's such a thing called a family unit that needs to be coordinated and organized and pulled together to get to a decent place in life. Complete mismanagement. So these are just the three major things that I, I, I chose to pick on today. But let's start asking ourselves, so why do we get married? Like the young man asked, why? Why are we doing it? I remember one of my friends, this is years back. I was, I just finished university. And young, young girls that we were, were a lot excited thinking, oh dear, what's the future going to bring for us? Are we going to meet the right man? Will he make us happy? You know, the usual Cinderella story. What's it going to be like? And this young girl, was not bothered and what was interesting was she happily got married to a married man who had three wives and I, I remember saying to her but, but why are you doing that don't you don't you feel the excitement of someone telling you how much they love you and want to take you around the world or make you happy you know someone within your age and she said no 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 you people are the one who are in the delusion and I, I said, what do you mean? He said, well, it's obvious. It's very obvious that this man in future is going to dump you. He's going to run around, have as many girlfriends as possible. If he does have money, you're going to just be a thing on the side. And, and, she, and she narrated the whole thing and it touched me. But then again, somehow I just felt she was just the one who was delusional. I thought, you know what, well, uh, yeah be happy go to your married man she said i know what i'm getting into he has three other wives so i'm number four and whatever he's given those three i will get it too and he's going to take care of me he's going to provide for me he's all of that is assured so why am i worried i know when he's not with me i know where he is you're the one who is in future when you do get married to this young man you're the one who will be wondering where he's gone and you won't know where he's gone and I never took her seriously. But today I look back and I said, she knew what she was talking about. Because she was the wiser one. I was one who was delusional. And so as so many of us out there, young girls hopping into, I watch videos all the time of these marriages. And I just laugh. And I talked about Elizabeth Taylor, who had to marry seven times I think eight times plus one twice. What are we looking for? Because for me, the big question, or rather the big understanding of what marriage was, was a partner for life. Someone that you can open up to. Someone you can chat with. Someone you can share ideas with. Someone you can, you can dream, have dreams with. Someone you can walk the journey of life with. 
that's not always what you get. You may just end up with someone who does not hear one word you say. You can speak from now till you drop and he's not hearing you. And in my particular case, I know who I am. I mean, I understand there's a video that I'm going to do again that's going to be focusing on how we relate to people. I understand that I cannot change another person. I understand that. But what I don't understand is how someone knows that what they're doing is not working for them. What you're doing right now is not working for you. But you still want to do it. That's what I don't understand. And that's the part about marriage that confuses me. And that's the part that could take all your energy. Because you see sitting down there ignorant, hoping that this person may one day realize that what they're doing is not working. And so they may want to change their ways. And that doesn't happen. But you're still sitting down there hoping. And this is where I am coming here now to chat with you about. You have to think really long and hard before you make those decisions. It's not what anyone thinks it is. You know, looking from the outside, because I know so many people who are not yet married and think they've missed out on so much. <sighs> If only I was married, my life would have been fantastic. I've written lots of things about, you know what, whatever it is we do, there are pros and cons. Whatever it is. If you're not married, there are, there are the pros and there are the cons. If you are married, there are the pros and there are the cons. But never you sit there because you did not get married or you, you're not married and you think, oh my gosh, I lost out. And then I know people who are also going to sit there and say, if it's so bad, why are you still in it? Because then the question would become, take so many things into consideration. Because if you pulled yourself into this scenario and so much is riding on it, how could you help yourself? How could you be in a position where the decisions you take now affect so many people. What do you then do? This is why a lot of people can't just run out. Because like we said, whichever scenario has its pros and cons. But the big message is, before you make that decision, think long and hard about it. I mean, something interesting that Dr. Morrow said in his, in his video. I can't remember what the title of his video was called, because now I know you may want to go and watch. But just type in Dr. I think Dr. Pastor Miles Morrow. He's, he's late now. And you see his videos on marriage and sex and all of that. He's like, God never actually said, you must get married because he never wanted to be held responsible when things start going wrong i know there's a passage that says you 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 and your wife now from your family you will leave your home and create yours and i know in genesis about Go ye and multiply. And I understand that bit about go ye and multiply it does not necessarily mean go and multiply children. It's about multiplying God's work. So anything God has put in your hands, go and make it bigger and better. So it's, it's something to do with our emotions and how we feel about somebody. And we think, we think in our head at the time that is in our head, we feel on top of the world. We feel we know it all. Even when people around us are watching and they're telling you that I can see this, this is not right. There's something there that's not happening. I had someone tell me the other day, it was rather interesting. And she said, my husband and I, 
we dated for six years before we got married but the man i got married was different from the man i dated and i thought wow i thought it was bad enough but six whole years you never knew this person yes and this is the kind of thing you will come across with some people sometimes they have this unique way of giving you what you want to see this is what you want to see this is it this is the person i am they show you that image you want you have you have somehow mentally created in their mind the image you want to see they give you that image until you finish it i do and the party is over and all the beautiful clothes have been taken off and all your friends and family have taken all the selfies and all the images has been put up on facebook on instagram and everywhere youtube videos and and then you're now behind doors and then they show the other side that you never saw and now you're regretting so i don't know how else i could say you could protect yourself against such a thing i don't know how i can say that and that's why in the end it always comes down to you as a person but this is where you have to learn to guard yourself how do you guard yourself so that you can be strong and overcome this is probably what we'll talk about another day but being strong enough to not be eaten up or overtaken or spend all your energy on trying to understand another person when you as a person you got things to contribute to the world you got things to do with your life and this is one of the scenarios where i remind us that we're born alone into this world and we will live alone i mean even twins even triplets they come at different times you've never heard of the two of them appearing at the same time no it might be two minutes later it might be five minutes later it might be ten minutes later but people come out of the mother's womb one at a time and this is what will happen when we leave this earth we will live one at a time even if it was a plane crash and there was 50,000 people in that plane and they all crashed in one island and people live at their own time so the bigger message here is you are an individual what i don't want to see is people suffering in marriage anymore it, it bothers me and that's why i said this is something from the heart my mom died in the process of marriage my sister and so i know how deeply hurt i feel when i see people in relationships suffering because somebody else has taken it upon themselves to become this bigger lord over the other and so it's your role to protect your own heart and see how you can pull yourself back together because this thing called emotion which is again why do we get married can overtake us oh i love him so much i cannot do without him I, I love her so much she's my life nobody can be your life god gave you the life you cannot turn another human being into an idol or into god he is my god she is my god no this is when you learn to pull back and be your own person because for me the bigger message was it is a partnership we are working this journey of life together as one now if you feel the fact that i have agreed to be part of you to work this journey together you feel it is not good enough that's fine that's fine all i have to do is suck my head out to understand that but I know it takes some of us longer than others to understand that it is not it's not by force nobody's putting a gun to your head to love somebody that doesn't want to love you or be attached to somebody who doesn't it's a mental thing you may physically be with someone but you're not necessarily mentally with that person you could walk around your understanding of these things So people needlessly dying in marriage, pull it out. Find a way to find you 
and be stronger with it so that this thing doesn't happen anymore because I know even as I'm speaking which I'm hoping I'm touching a few lives there are still people who are still struggling trying to make sense of this thing called marriage we need to wake up because I don't know if the statistics are there but you yeah, it should be but because nobody talks about marriage somehow it's it's like glossed over oh it doesn't happen let's move on oh the people have high blood, blood pressure how many people died this year of high blood pressure how do you know what they what, what led to that high blood pressure how do you know it leads to obesity how do you know how many of those cases comfort eating because i've been put down so much I can't help myself, let me just eat everything I find. Or even uh, bulimia, or, or, or what's the other one? All the food disorders. How do you know how many of them are not coming from marriage? I mean, I went to a workshop the other day and interestingly, this young lady we were chatting, her husband told her she's a cabbage. I don't get it. So you mentally start to break someone down right from the mental state. Then the person starts losing confidence in themselves, start wondering who they are. And before, they know, before you know it, that person disintegrates into something else. It happened to my sister. So I know what I'm talking about. And the sooner we wake up and come out of this, the better for all of us. So major things to take with this, this video. Sex is not marriage. And when they start lying to you about how they will never touch anybody else but you, don't take it to heart. But when the forces, bigger forces out there, come in this marriage, it will not be love that will hold you together. It will be something else. Anyway, so let's stop it here today. I look forward to seeing you in our next video. and. To find another interesting topic that really touches my heart to share with you and see how this can help to shape your life for the better as well thank you and god bless you please remember to share this with your friends remember to subscribe to us i know we come sporadically but whenever we can we come so see you in the next video and god bless you